In our initial HiC video, we looked at the ways in which you can prepare and quality control a HiC data set to get down to a set of probes for subsequent interaction analysis which should produce reliable results. In this video, we're going to take the set of probes that we defined in the last video and actually move on to identifying the significant interactions within this data set. Interaction analysis is done by the construction of a HiC heat map and this is constructed under the plots menu under high C heat map. You can construct heat maps with two different scalings on them. Either the axes can represent genomic coordinates or you can just select sets of probes and analyze it based on probe lists. In this case we're going to use the genome view but the process and the filtering that is applied is exactly the same in both cases. We have a number of options that we see when we construct a heat map we will choose a set of initial values for the filters that are applied on here and these are really to exclude interactions that we're never going to be interested in so these are a base set of filters once we've constructed the heat map we can adjust these filter values but only in order to make them more stringent they can never be made less stringent than we initially specify in this case the options that I'm going to use are that I am going to put no minimum distance on the size of interactions. I've put a maximum distance in but the maximum distance is longer than the longest chromosome length so in this case I'm just going to you look at cis interactions so I'm using this filter to exclude all trans interactions just to make this a bit quicker. When we're doing the analysis we calculate uh, a an interaction strength which is expressed as an observed over expected ratio for the number of interactions we actually get and the number we would expect to see and by default here we're only going to look at things which are more enriched than we'd expect by chance we do a significance calculation which I'll talk a little bit about uh, but the default here is to look for a significance of 0.05 uh, and we can also filter on the absolute number of interactions that are required and in this case we're not going to be interested in anything which has fewer than three absolute interactions regardless of the other parameters. The final option on here says for cis interactions whether we may apply a correction based on the physical linkage. I'm going to turn this off to start with so that we're looking at the raw interactions uh, which include the effect of different parts of the chromosome being physically linked together. If I start the calculation, I can explain how it actually works. So when calculating an interaction strength, the program considers cis and trans interactions completely separately. And what it does is it initially works out a likelihood of getting a crossover between any two sets of probes by looking at the relative level of coverage in either cis or trans in those two probes and working out what proportion of that type of sequence that that represents. Once you have that expectation value for what the chance of any individual read crossing over between those two probes is, the program then uses a binomial test to say that from the number of reads that actually start in one probe, what the expected number should be in the other, and what the significance is of the number that was actually observed. Once we have that value, we then apply multiple testing correction and then report the hits. The results that we get come up in a separate window and are displayed as a heat map. There are a number of controls that you have inside this heat map. There are sliders on the left hand side to apply more stringent filters for the same parameters that you saw before and also some options to uh, either filter this further or apply different color schemes to the view. You can zoom in and out of the high C plot by dragging a box the same way as we do in the chromosome view. So if I want to look at one particular chromosome I can drag a box and zoom in and you can see that because we've not corrected for distance that the majority of interactions we're seeing are in very close cis proximity. I can zoom in further to get to a more detailed view of the interactions and by right mouse clicking I can zoom out. If I want to zoom out just on one axis or the other I can press the shift key to zoom out just on the y axis or the control key to zoom out just on the x axis. So between the two, I can get a fairly sort of flexible set of movements. Once I'm inside the plot, I can interact back with the main SeekMonk window in a number of ways. If I want to look in detail at one specific interaction, if I double click on that interaction, I will see 
one end of it highlighted in the main SeatMonk display and if I shift and double click on it I will see the other end. For a larger region let's say I want to look at the front end of this chromosome here as long as the view that I have is completely contained within one chromosome I can use the buttons to send either the X or the Y coordinates of what I'm currently looking at in my high C view into the main chromosome view. I can also work back the other way so that if I look in the chromosome view and I find a region that I want to see in my high C plot I can select that region, move back to my high C plot and then say match chromosome view and then both axes will then respond and show me that region in the high C plot and from which I can zoom out. The interactions that I've got can be filtered using the sliders on the left hand side so if I want to look for things that are more stringently filtered on the significance than we're looking at now I can just slide this and see how the plot changes although I can drag it further back on here the filter and cutoff will end at the point at which you hit the initial value that you filtered on when you set the calculation up. Likewise for absolute filtering I can adjust those. I can also apply distance filters so I've already put in a maximum distance but I can apply minimum distance in here as well so that I can limit the range of sizes of interaction that I'm willing to look at uh, and likewise the strength I can also choose to change the colour scheme that I look at in the plot. So the default colour scheme is to look at the observed over expected and this is on a cold to hot colour scheme but I can change this by changing the gradient that I specify in my chromosome track setup. So whatever gradient is set genome wide will also apply to this but the, color, the hot to cold seems to work pretty well. Um, I can also colour by p-value if I want to colour by significance. So here we go, the most significant ones come up in this red colour here. Uh, I can colour by the number of interactions, the absolute number of interactions and I can also apply a colour based on the current quantitation so the data that I'm looking at here is currently quantitated by the cis to trans ratio so if I zoom in on a region I can then colour by the current quantitation and see those cis to trans values superimposed onto the display and that would apply to whatever I've colored this by so if I want to color by coverage or some other value then I can use that to color my high C plot so I can see exactly what's going on. Now because I've not corrected for distance in this plot I can see that it's highly biased by the physical connectedness of my points but that there are points that are much more distant but still significant. If I want to get a more realistic view of what the true biological interactions are, I can reconstruct the plot, but this time I am going to correct for physical linkage. And all this does is that when calculating the expected value for uh, a crossover between two probes, it looks at the average likelihood of crossover between reads at those distances based on the overall profile of read distances across the entire high c dataset and adds that into an extra parameter when calculating the overall likelihood. Other than that the calculation is exactly the same. If I look at the plot with the distance correction applied I should see that there is a much wider spread of interactions that I've lost a lot of interactions close to because those are taken out by the physical connectedness being removed but that the significance of more distal interactions has increased. Same filters can be applied in here and if I apply a stringent enough filter I can get down to a relatively small number of probes that I might want to investigate more thoroughly. So if I do this and maybe filter out some of the close cis and find some of the more significant external interactions once I've got to a set of interactions that I want to pursue, I can make a report from this where I can now annotate those interactions with, let's say, the closest gene and get a report that looks similar to the sort of probe reports that I see elsewhere, except that these probe reports have 
two probes in, one for each end of the interaction, and information based on the observed over expected, the significance value, and the absolute number of interactions on here. Uh, all of these are interactive so that I can double click on any of these to see the appropriate regions within the genome when I'm actually looking at these. So this kind of report is an easy way to list the set of putative interactions that I'm going to work with. Another option that I can have is if I want to find a particularly strong interaction and then I want to look at that in more detail in my chromosome view let's say I'm interested in this particular interaction here. If I double click on this interaction I can find the probe that this comes from so this would be this probe here. I can select that by filtering it And now what I can do is construct a virtual 4C data set from the other ends of the reads in this region. To do this I go into the file menu, import data and then high C other ends. I can either do this from the active probe list or the current region, it's exactly the same thing in this case. I give my new data set a prefix. and it will make up a virtual 4C data set from the other ends of the reads that exist at this position. I can now quantitate this if I want to and when I quantitate it there is a specific 4C enrichment quantitation which performs exactly the same calculation as we've just done for the high C analysis but just on this probe so I essentially see the range of enrichment values for the other ends of this one probe. I can now look at the full set of probes for that to see the pattern of enrichment across my data set and from my original high C interaction over here I can look at the other end of that and see that this is the data that was found these are the interactions that were pulled out from this other end region and I can see that there is an enrichment here and at this distance I can see that I have a number of interactions here which is higher than most of the surrounding region and with the significance that's there. So I can see precisely why this region was pulled out and you can do this then for any interactions that you pull out. So with these fairly simple tools it's reasonably straightforward to be able to construct a list of interactions to report those out if you want to just get a list to take forward for other analyses or to go back to the main set of data and explore those further to actually see the evidence that underlies them and help you to understand why they were found.